How to beat the narcissist at his own game. Narcissist manipulate. The vast majority of narcissists do so without realizing that is what they are actually doing. Those are the lesser and mid-range narcissists who operate through instinct. A smaller number of narcissists, the greater and the ultra, operate through conscious calculation. The manipulations are planned and are executed accordingly. In terms of playing the narcissist at his or her own game, that would mean embracing the manipulations that the narcissist engages in. Everybody has the capability to manipulate. After all, they are human beings. Those who are empaths ordinarily do not manipulate. The reason for that is it does not form part of their personality makeup. They are guided by emotional empathy. That is what regulates their decision making, their thoughts and their behaviours. Sometimes it is an unconscious regulation on their conduct, that they behave in a particular way without thinking about it. In other instances, there is a conscious application of emotional empathy, most commonly putting yourself in the shoes of somebody else, thinking, I wouldn't like it if this was done to me, so I'm not going to do it to anybody else. Empaths can manipulate. It is rare, it is unusual, and it is usually as a consequence of operating on the basis of either a misunderstanding or an erosion of emotional empathy caused by an external stressor. Where those manipulations take place by the empath, they are invariably aimed at the narcissist, because the narcissist is the protagonist, is the one that has caused the problems towards the empathic victim. But more usually, the empath does not do so. The empath would rather seek to resolve a situation through reconciliation, through fixing, through healing, through getting to the truth of the matter, by exhibiting compassion, by being an excellent listener, listener, and so on and so forth. Indeed, exhibiting their own empathic traits. Normal people can also be manipulative. Again, this may occur where they don't have emotional empathy for somebody who sits outside of their circle of emotional empathy, strangers for example. Ordinarily, they would not behave in a manipulative manner towards people within that circle of emotional empathy, close friends, family, neighbours, etc. But again, similar to the empath, an erosion of emotional empathy can cause that to occur. What normals and empaths have in common is that they are not designed to be habitually manipulative. They don't need it as part of their coping mechanisms. And indeed, the existence of their emotional empathy invariably precludes behaving in that manner. Should manipulations be engaged in, they are rare and, as a consequence of the lack of need to do it, the rarity of doing so, such individuals are in fact not particularly accomplished at it and often make mistakes. We, on the other hand, are designed to manipulate. Because we look at the world through a lens of control, you're either with us or you're against us, our narcissism has evolved to ensure that we seek to apply that control to gather the fuel that we need, to gather those character traits for the construct and also the residual benefits, and that manipulation, whether they be fair or foul, benign or malign, are applied. Whether it is flattering you, bribing you, triangulating you with a person, triangulating you with an event, triangulating with an object. Putting you down, belittling you, insulting you, administering physical violence towards you, a silent treatment, be it absent or present, a word salad, a circular conversation, utilising sex to manipulate you, withdrawing from sex to manipulate you, utilising the telling of lies, smearing, pity plays. The range and depth of manipulations is both wide and extensive. We have been designed to use them and to do so in such an accomplished manner, be it through instinct or a calculated conscious application of them. This is our game. We were designed to play it this way through our altered perspective. And therefore, if you are to try and beat us at our own game, this means 
that you are forced, then, to engage in manipulative behavior towards us. This presents two significant problems for you, which then lead to an array of other ones. The first problem is, you are not practiced at these things. They don't come to you naturally, and therefore, as a consequence of that, it means that you are unlikely to implement them effectively. You might be able to manipulate non-narcissists with a degree of effectiveness, although invariably you would have no need to do so. But when it comes to manipulating the narcissist, you are not skilled at doing so, and therefore the execution of it is likely to fail in the first place. Those that you believe that you are effective at causing manipulation to work as against the narcissist being led, misled by a lack of understanding about narcissism and your own emotional thinking. And I address that point in this next one. The second fundamental problem that you face when seeking to execute a manipulation against us, and even if you do execute it, it is invariably going to fail because you are seeking to control that which is designed not to be controlled. Our default setting is of hypersensitivity to any and all threats to our control. And therefore, if you are seeking to manipulate us by playing us at our own game, then you are going to meet with failure, because we are automatically designed to reject it. We will respond either with a direct assertion of control, and thus we nullify your threat, or an indirect assertion of control. Again, we nullify the threat, or we withdraw. Either active withdrawal, walking away from you or putting the phone down on you, or passive withdrawal, staying distant from you from a position of already existing withdrawal. Either way, somehow, through one of those three assertions, we always achieve control. And that means your threat will always, in some form, be nullified. It doesn't mean that we actually force you to do something. No, not necessarily so, but that doesn't matter. Because from our narcissistic perspective, so long as your threat to our control is stopped, nullified, rejected, we then have control. That is the nature of the narcissistic perspective. Therefore, you are not practiced at manipulation. And even where you discharge the manipulation in a manner whereby you've not got it wrong, it's still going to end up being rejected by us. If you do something which occasions an outcome which you wanted, do not be fooled into thinking, hurrah, I have successfully manipulated a manipulator. You have not. The only reason that it happened is because the narcissist required it to happen anyway. You had serendipity. You got lucky. Why? As I've just explained. Our self-defense mechanism is automatic and it doesn't make for allowances. It will always seek to assert control. It doesn't think, oh well, I'll let it slide on this occasion, not to worry, we'll assert control next week. Every single time you do something through the three interactions with the narcissist that causes a threat to control, our response is to assert control over you. Therefore, if you get an outcome that you wanted from the narcissist, all that's happened is your outcome aligned with that of the narcissist and you struck lucky. You can't manipulate a manipulator. And the sooner that those of you who think that you can accept that you can't, the more enriched your life will be because you will stop wasting your time giving us fuel, which is what we want, meaning we win. You will stop suffering from adverse consequences expending effort where it's not necessary to do so, subjecting yourself to the potential for malign responses, increasing your anger, your frustration, your upset, and finally, ensuring that you don't top up your emotional thinking any further. I cannot make it clear enough that if you think that you can manipulate somebody that is essentially designed to manipulate, you are either suffering from a lack of understanding about narcissism allied with high emotional thinking, causing you not to accept the logic of what is being explained, or B, you may well be a narcissist and you are unable to accept this because of course it offends your need for control. 
You don't beat the narcissist by trying to play him at his own game. You're not designed to do that. It is like a shark trying to take on an eagle in the air. The shark is not designed to fly, therefore it would never attempt such a battle. And you must adopt a similar approach. This doesn't mean that you are entirely helpless, far from it. My material explains in detail the appropriate and the most effective steps that can be taken. But this video, as a part, alongside others, is part of giving misconceptions about the narcissistic dynamic, the myths, the misunderstandings, the Tudor treatment, so that people come and think, maybe I can beat the narcissist at their own game. Actually now, having listened and applied the logic, I realize that that is ill-conceived and was only be to my detriment. If you continue to interact with us, you will give us fuel. We win. You will suffer an adverse consequence, most likely. You lose. And you will increase your emotional thinking. You lose. Three reasons why you ought not to continue the interaction. Instead, rather than focusing on trying to beat the narcissist at his own game, you create your own game. You leave the battlefield. You implement no contact. Of course, the addiction that you are likely to have what doesn't want you to do this, and it will try everything that it can through the application of flawed logic and the charging of your battery feeling to make you think and to make you feel that you should somehow go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, head to head fight the narcissist tooth and nail. But that is not logical thinking. Your addiction wants you to enter one or more of the five arenas of interaction and for you to stay there. And it cons you by making you think that you can manipulate us. And all you're doing is losing. It cons you by making you think that you can beat the narcissist at our own game by using our manipulations against us. You cannot, and nor should you. Of course, your emotional thinking will make you think it is not fair, that the narcissist should not be allowed to get away with it, that the narcissist always seems to win, that you feel helpless, that you've not been able to bring about our comeuppance, that you want to delight in causing a problem for us. And of course, remember, in some instances where you apply manipulation that fails, but the narcissist becomes annoyed and irritated as a consequence of the threats of control that you have caused, it might feel to you like you're meeting with success. Once again, your emotional thinking is conning you by making you think that you have succeeded so that you continue to do it. What have you done? You've given challenge fuel to the narcissist. So you've provided fuel, which is what the narcissist wants, but of course there is a challenge contained within it which the narcissist must respond to. You may feel happy, content, elated that you've annoyed the narcissist, but then the narcissist is going to come back at you in some form, and that will most likely be by way of a malign hoover. Sometimes it might be that the narcissist flounces, and you delight in having rubbed your hands in glee that you've caused the narcissist to retreat in that fashion. But that should never be counted as a victory. You still gave its fuel, and you've increased your emotional thinking. And the danger is that the addiction whispers in your ear, Well done. You showed that narcissist. Do it again. And you do. And just like the drug addict who thinks, I can control this. I've got a handle on this. You're being conned into more and more interactions, the provision of more and more fuel, and the risk that the next time the attempt to manipulate might not meet with the retreat of the narcissist, but a full-blooded assault against you, with the obvious consequences that flow from that. Accordingly, when it comes to the concept of beating the narcissist at his or her own game, do not fall for that emotional thinking. Apply the logic. Recognize that it cannot be achieved, that logically that cannot be achieved, and recognize the downsides that come with it, and instead... March off the battlefield. Preserve your assets. Maintain your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence by no longer expending them on a narcissist on a fool's errand of trying to manipulate the manipulator, which will not succeed. Implement your no contact and beat the narcissist through the application of a different game. Namely, not playing it anymore. This has been a Tudor treatment. I'm H.D. Tudor. Thank you for listening.